there's unrealistic expectations set by these guys for people, especially young guys that are a little naive yep. because, you know, they're, they're looking at these guys like, man, I want to look like that, but Hey, they say I could follow their program and do it naturally and this and that. And it's, it's just a lie. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Muscle Discord. And we have a, a really, really amazing guest on today, Steve Kuko. Uh, man, it's uh, it's an honor to have you on, brother. And we appreciate you taking the time to join us on the show. Man, it's uh, appreciate you having me on. I think, uh, you know, Matt, there's Matt one and two here. So yes, we got, Matt you T, know, and Matt R. <laughs> Matt, you know, I say Matt and he'd be like, well, who? but uh, yeah. reached out to me and just said, you know, mentioned about what you guys are doing, man. And I said, I, I'm in. I, I love I love positive things. I love positive messages. And and especially on an insider, industry insider like you guys, I think this is going to be uh, this something great. So let's go. Excited to be on. Well, we, we appreciate, we appreciate it. it. And, and you know, speaking of that, I mean, we, we go go back to to the all max days right so you know i i was lucky enough to join all max for for a time and you you were the guy on on, on the roster man so i had the pleasure of, of of uh you know making content with you and and dealing with you chat with you and uh you know i think we did some great things over there um in fact i think the last time i saw you was at the 2019 mr olympia right, right. we were hanging backstage type thing yeah and you 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 play sixth or something on in yeah. that show mm -hmm. and you looked phenomenal right. T tell me a little bit about that show you know how how it went for you that was uh that was probably my best showing at, well it was definitely my best showing at the olympia um love the the package i brought and it was that was kind of out of all the years i did it i think it was the fifth or sixth olympia i did um it was the first one that I actually said to myself, like, you know what? I belong there and I belong in that top five. Like it, the confidence was in myself. Yeah. And I felt like I did the, enough work on my physique and filled in the, the little, you know, little gaps here and there that needed to be filled in. And I felt like, Hey, this is the year I could, I could make some waves and crack that top five and man, right there and get number six. But I mean, I was still in that first call out and they did six on the first call out. And um, it, it definitely, the reward of like all that hard work and years and years and years, just, you know, the thing about bodybuilding that a lot of people, I mean, you guys understand it being in it, but bodybuilding is definitely a delayed gratification sport. It's not like, Hey, you know, I'm going to pick the sport up in a year. I'm going to get to the pinnacle of it. And boom. I mean, bodybuilding out of all the physique sports is one that takes the longest to get to the top. And um, I mean, you see the incredible athletes and these physiques that have developed over years and years and years of training. Um, so to be able to bring a package, stand on stage with the best and, and hold my own and, and be, you know, to say whether you, even if just getting an Olympia stage is, is an accomplishment, but being able to say you're top 10 or top five, that's, that's one that, yeah. you know, you could hang, hang on the, uh, the mantle there hang and, in the trophy room yep. and say, Hey, this was, this was one of the, one of the most memorable kind of defining moments in my career. Amazing. Well, actually then that that's a good jumping off point to kind of going back in time a little bit and before you turned pro in Dallas in 2011, what were some of the setbacks and, and successes that ultimately led you to turning pro? Yeah. You know, I, I started in, in the industry 2003, four. So it's, I've been 20 years in this game, you know, yeah. Yeah. social media, just the, uh, you know, all it was was the, 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 uh, the, the chat room in the, in like the forums back in the day. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. The, body the good old days of bodybuilding. Yep. Went like, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was just like the yeah. community and it wasn't like the random troll on lot. You know, there yes. was really a lot of trolls there, but. That was a percent. Um, it was, you know, 2003, four, did the team nationals, had a lot of success. Um, and it's funny because you mentioned you're at Muscle Tech now and that's kind of when I, that was the first company I signed. With I know. Muscle Tech. I know. Um, did that the old before and after pictures that they did. Mm -hmm. and, and yep. So that was like yep. 2005, I think it was when I did that. Um, so I, you know, had a lot of success starting early in the teen years going in my early twenties and, and then making that jump into the national level yeah. where, you know, okay, I'm going against the big boys now, but here I'm, you know, 22, 23, trying to, you know, learn my body, trying to grow, trying to figure out, you know, the whole nail it and conditioning game and, and size and being a bigger guy, like being a super heavyweight 
the smaller guys, you just get gnarly condition. And yeah. It's not so much about size, but you get in the heavies and super heavies. It's like, okay, you got to be huge and you got to be ripped. It's a whole nother yeah. ball game. So it's been a lot of years developing that formula and figuring that one out. But, um, you know, several national shows just falling short, turning pro. I did nationals, USAs, and it was always in that top five mix, always one of the guys to look out for. And in those years, it was like, muscular development and flex and they were following the national level guys as much if not more than what a lot of the pro level guys yep. were so there was so much excitement and hype behind the national level shows it was like i remember you know md would come down and film for two weeks from like the eight to six week out and then they'll come film from like the two to one week out period yeah and, yeah. and you'd just get this hype behind you and I mean, you uh, as an amateur going into a show, and there was like you, you would walk in like a celebrity, like oh, yeah. there's Steve, and there you knew all the guys. You know, now I'm like, who who are these guys? Yeah, you know? it's there's different. Not, there's yeah. not the hype. It, it's a shame, but that yeah. I mean, it was kind of a golden era of that that kind of um, the bodybuilding in that age. So, yeah. um, you know, the the goal to me was like, man, I'd love to win the, the USA Champions. I want to win the Mister USA after getting so close several years and then I finally uh, won the overall there. And that was, that was, you know, that, that pinnacle moment of that transition from amateur to pro. And it's yep. like, you, you reach the top of the mountain, but then you get to the top, you're looking like, Oh damn, there's a way bigger mountain. I got to climb now. So. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Matt, go ahead. If you have yeah. To, uh... So to follow up after that. So yeah, uh, you placed third at the 20, 2022 Arnold classic, which is like, you're right up there. You know, and it seems like that was yeah. like four years ago or something, but it's like it's, it was last year. Right? <laughs> I and know it, it was it's crazy. crazy. No, COVID, yes, COVID happened and that year went off, and then I did the twenty one Arnold, and everybody like was like, "Oh, you took all this time off." I'm like, "No, I didn't. I mean, I just took what the world shut down. I, yeah, you know, I did the twenty twenty Arnold. It was it, right before everything shut down, and yeah, and then did twenty one, twenty two, um, in the last couple of years at the Arnold, right in the mix." Was, was in the top three um, yep. i mean that one year it was nick walker and i battling it out and it was after prejudging i mean it was a coin toss to me like yep. who is him or him or i and then i kind of got third so that was one of those like you kind of scratch your head like what the hell yeah. happened kind of thing <laughs> but um a little bit disappointing but at the end of the day top three at, at the arnold it's very similar to what like an olympia is the quality of guys so yeah no and like since since that show like what what are you working on what have you been up to Man, it, it's uh, a lot of life changes and things. Yep. And, and I, you know, kind of getting into my late thirties now and, and just looking at life a little differently. Um, when I met my wife and, and, and uh, Michelle and I would just a whole different spin on the way I, I, I start thinking of, and I want to have a family. I want to, you know, I start thinking of legacy, this, you know, in bodybuilding, yeah. everything's so much about yourself. And it's so it's such a, what do I have to do? And I got to train, I got to do the show. And it's like, that's like what just my whole life has been very much, you know, show after show and goal yeah. after goal and just, just knocking these things out. But I'm like, just start thinking a little bit more long-term and uh, you know, with, we actually, it was a middle of a prep of 22 right before the uh, Texas pro, we found out that she was pregnant. And, um, and then we, we actually, she miscarried uh, the week before the show, which was absolutely. Oh no. Just, uh, oh, hard sorry to hear that. Yeah. And it was, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. I think in life, you you could hear things that happen, but until you go through it yourself, you really don't understand like the the trauma or heartbreak. Of no, 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 so just it, this the gravity. It gave me a of whole it. other level of sympathy and, and compassion for people that that struggle with this or have had miscarriages. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I mean, it was it was extremely difficult. So that was like, hey, I'm going to take a step back, and we really going to focus on you, you know being in bodybuilding and and what we do to our bodies is not the the best for fertility, let's say. Yeah. You know? so, yes. so I, that was my goal. Like, Hey, I'm going to take a step back. I want to get my body as healthy as possible, as fertile as possible. And okay. really work on that was been my focus since the last time I got on stage. So spent about six months and, and we were just, I mean, done everything naturally, no, no doctor help or no IVF type stuff. And then yeah. back in, um, it was March, my wife, um, we 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 were going for about six months and sure enough like we get you know she showed me the positive pregnancy test and we're like oh my god so excited so that was you know something we've really been working toward um we're able to accomplish that naturally and then um just found out not too long ago we're having a boy 
So wow, oh my congratulations for, for the Kuklo name and <laughs> uh, uh, love it. <laughs> congratulations. Congratulations. Um, so Fantastic. like that's yeah, that's been the focus, you know, starting some new business stuff, building that, you know, going with with my my group and uh, my leadership and, and like personal development side coaching the upgraded human. I think we yep. talked about a little bit. So, yep. yeah, I got a lot of stuff in the works, but, you know, a lot of great things and, and excited to share with you guys. Awesome. It's amazing. OK, so that kind of leads me into like your routine now. Like, how are you training? Are you training just to maintain or are you training to like still try and get bigger or refine things? Like, what's your your routine like now? I, if training is, you know, that, that's the one thing that I, I, I always train like hard. I always enjoy yeah. training. Training is that lifestyle that, that's kind of in my blood. Like I just can't, I couldn't go into the gym and, and kind of do a, a, a foo-foo workout, for instance. Like to yeah. me, I'm like, man, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to kill it. And I'm going to, you know, push myself to the max. And I mean, it was a few weeks ago that, you know, to kind of Tarantino this story, I did the 200 pound dumbbells a few weeks ago. And then, you know, okay. Prior to that, I was, you know, went a hundred percent natural on everything for months and months trying to get my wife pregnant. Yeah. And so like to get back on some, some basic TRT yeah. and get my body feeling like, Oh, I'm feeling kind of good again. Yep, yep. Um, but you know, I spent so many years training and training heavy and building this muscle. Like it didn't disappear. People think like, Oh, if I come off, no. you know, steroids or my hormones, whatever that, I mean, if you've trained hard for years and you've lived the lifestyle and you eat good, you train like that muscle's yep. not going anywhere. It's no. there. So for me, yeah. it was, it was just, I still train. I still eat. I mean, I probably back down my food significantly. That's probably okay. been the most enjoyable thing. I'm not eating six, seven meals a day. Yeah. I'll probably eat four or five meals a day. Um, a lot more relaxed in that area, but I still hold, I'm still holding about 270, 275. Um, okay. Wow. So okay. I, I'm just enjoying training. My training partner is getting ready for some shows. So, you know, that kind of keeps me a little bit at a higher intensity with my training, but okay. I, as, as I start feeling better, my body start feeling a little bit, you know, my testosterone start rising just from yeah. getting on TRT. I'm like, man, yeah. I'm, I feel like a million bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the way that kind of leads me into, uh, you know, like, what's your, your diet like right now? You said you eat like maybe four or five meals a day. What's your like macro breakdown, like carbs, protein, fats per day? You know, I, I would say going back to, after the last show and spending some time getting my body healthy, uh, getting uh, after shows, like it just feels like there's so many things that need to repair. There's little nag, yeah. there's little injuries you kind of ignore or don't feel. And I felt like my GI it, it was just, you know, that there's so much stress that happens on the GI when yep. you yep. eat seven meals a day, large quantities, huge amounts of protein, like there, your GI is just constantly working. So it was nice to kind of take a step back and, and I got into um, eating like it's kind of a cross between, I would say, I love red meat. So I love like the carnivore style, yep. you know, diets and stuff like that, but I love, you know, fruits and natural. Um, yeah. you know, I, I try to avoid a lot of overly processed stuff. Um, I, I try to eat more natural when it comes to, to foods, you know, fruits, yeah. vegetables, uh, my wife's an amazing cook, so I'm, I'm blessed there. You that know, helps. so mm -hmm. she loves to make things, you know, yeah. from scratch. We're not opening stuff from cans, and um, so I, I have to say that probably my diet is. I I still follow that regimen of of before I work out, I got to get a meal in. So I train in yeah. the morning, so I get at least one meal before I train. Wake up, yeah. have my coffee, do my routine, and and then start uh, I get a meal in yeah. and I usually like to do like I'm, I love red meat like I said so I'll do like maybe a little red meat and some eggs and maybe some cream of rice and and uh, or a bagel or something train and then my post-workout is just as standard as it gets it is two scoops away in Gatorade that's what I've done okay. for years and years and years like <laughs> that's right school, yes yes know? yes I remember that I remember that <laughs> so yep you know and then uh, from there I'll probably eat you know two or three more meals throughout the day uh typically some kind of protein, like usually probably eight ounces of protein, whether it's yeah. beef, um, you know, uh, beef, chicken, pretend, sometimes I have friends that love to hunt. So whether it, okay. I've gotten tons of bison or elk and, you know, some kind of, of yep. meat yeah. with each meal and a uh, probably two cups of rice. Like I still eat a good amount of food, but not quite as much. That's why I've always grown into the show the last probably four or five years I've done. Okay. I, I start my prep in the two seventies and I'll grow into a show. I'll, I'll okay. end up being yeah. 
yeah. you know, 285 on stage when I start to prep at 270. And people are like, that's Interesting. Yeah. 15 pounds yeah. of muscle. Give yeah. me a recomp in my body. But it's just from the amount of food that I eat. So okay. I know if I really cranked my, you know, put 100% focus on my diet right now, I'd probably blow up to 280, 285. And if I got, you know, on the, on the super yeah. steps, like things would really accelerate. So, <laughs> yeah. And then, so I always I want to ask this question, like when you're competing and then you're two weeks out, what's your, your macro breakdown? Like how many carbs per day are you eating two weeks out from a show? The two week out, it usually it's, it's pretty depending where I'm at, you know, lots depending on progress. Yeah. And like, if you're in a good spot, I'd like to be close to ready at two weeks out. That way okay. I have some 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 maneuverability with with carbs and protein but usually it's protein pretty high and i usually like i've what always have worked well for me is like carb cycling yes so I, it'll be probably a high day around some big body parts stuff like legs or, or back and then yeah. i kind of alter it um it's gina my trainer she she she's a big she's big on like on calories like she feeds the crap out of me just because yeah. you're feeding a 285 yeah. physique it's not yeah. a 180 pound physique. No. It just requires so much more food. And yeah. that's the struggle with a lot of big guys, you know, guys like Rami, myself, you, you see like um, the, the bigger frame guys, it takes so much food to fuel and maintain that, that it's, you're, you're about, you're trying to balance the, the conditioning aspect to maintaining the muscle and the yeah. fullness with it. So um, that's definitely in, in it, it's not the smaller physique guys. I'm not going to say have, have an advantage, but that's the advantage that they don't need as much food yeah. when it's when it's time to cut down. But that two week out period, it's like, man, I'm really, I, I it's kind of there's a little bit that suck. Like, man, I wish I had more food. You're getting really hungry. Um, rotating carbs, carbs probably fluctuate for me. Low low carbs is probably 200, and I probably okay. go up to four to five hundred on a high day. Okay. Protein yeah. stays pretty pretty much the same at like you know eight eight ounces cooked per meal kind of so yeah I, I i was pushing for pushing for the numbers like, so one then i'll say your low your low carb is like 200 grams per day yeah yeah and, and your, then uh fats rotate like we don't cut fat completely but it's it's a pretty low fat diet i would say because okay. we push more on the carbs and then as i what what i feel like worked for me was instead of carving up that last week heavy the last couple of days okay. and just jamming so much food in i spread it out over the week the week so, i mean i've done where i'm doing a thousand cal or a thousand carbs a day for three days and just yeah. to get that you know the, to fill for back this, out yeah and then i'm like man i feel like i just ate a thanksgiving you know turkey yeah. every every, yeah. every meal and i'm like i'm so full but what ends up i've you know if i stretch that out over a week if i'm ready yeah stretching those you know three thousand grams of carbs out over five or six days have worked a lot better with digestion and stuff like that so yes interesting it's a great insight for people because a lot of people just carve up the thursday friday but before the show and that's it but you're spreading it out over the week that's kind of the first time i've actually heard that so it's yeah that's why i ask these questions so we it, can find out yeah exactly and and that way you if I'm if I need more toward the end, I could still bump it up. But yeah, if I yeah. need, if I could pull back, you can always let pull my back. Body relax a little bit and like, hey, instead of you know maybe the last Wednesday Thursday I was at six seven hundred grams of carbs, maybe I only need five hundred on Friday because I'm yeah. pretty full and I don't need to keep yeah. pushing as hard. And every you know your body kind of relaxes a little bit, digestion is not you know as yes. crazy. And and as you're manipulating water going into that, and as you start pulling that back, everything starts slowing down a little bit. So. You just keep cramming in as you're pulling water. Like there's so many moving okay. pieces that. <laughs> That's crazy. That, that makes me... perfect sense though. Yeah. It makes perfect yeah. sense. Well, that, yeah. that leads me to another question then water. The last week, are you, do you do a water load where you're, you, you do 12 liters on Sunday, then 10, then six, then four, then three, then one. Like, do you do that? Or how do you, do you just cut your water like the Friday before? Yeah, the like I, I try to be pretty consistent with my, my water intake yeah. um, throughout the prep. And then. Gina and I, she, she likes to water load a little bit toward the beginning to kind of, to get that, yep. get that, get your body working. flushing it out. Yep. Yep. And so we'll, we'll keep that. We'll keep water in. Like if I cut water too hard or too soon, yep. then I flatten out like everything. Yep. It's just forget about it. So yep. um, for me, I keep water in, it's probably close to two gallons, um, like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we start cutting down, maybe going down to a gallon and a half. Yeah. I've pretty much gone, like if I'm competing Saturday, that Friday, I'll do between three quarters and maybe even a full gallon on that yeah. Friday and cut it at night, like and not drink really until maybe after pre-judging. But yeah. if I don't, 
because there's so there's still a lot of food going down. If I'm not eat drinking enough water with it, yeah, like I said, I'll either flatten out or digestion starts getting messed up, and then we're starting to fight a few different things going on. Yeah. Great, no, great insight. That's why I asked those questions because a lot of people that watch this, they want to know like, what is Steve like? What is he doing right before st- getting on stage? Like, these are your yeah, yeah like champions. precisely. And, and, yeah, and that's the thing that I always tell people: like, it, it, just try to keep things simple mm-hmm. and, and don't overcomplicate it. You, you've done the same routine for for three or four months to get to this spot. Like, so why yeah. try to change all this stuff at the very end to try to look? one percent better when you could look potentially 99 percent worse yeah and most exactly. of the time people end up looking worse because yeah. they throw something like curveball at their body it shocks it and they're like you know eat something that they haven't eaten and you know they're having all these reactions yeah and so yeah i like to keep things simple i mean there there's a formula that works that 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 works for me that i know like i just kind of explained some of the things and that's yeah. been years of trial and error um, and some people maybe, you know, could carve up one day with, you know, have a freak physique, carve up one day and boom, they're ready. Yeah. You know, me, I, I like smaller guys boxes. can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Matt, I'll let you pop in there if you have any other questions. Yeah. 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 I've got one and we kind of touched on it uh, a little while ago um, about the industry. It's changed so much over the years with social media coming, mm-hmm. coming to light, right. And the ability to connect with the fans but also the rise of the insta famous influencer type yeah. of thing so g- good or bad steve good or bad yeah from a guy coming up in the magazine era like I, a- I, as I, did i the pros so. the pros to it is the fans have a lot more access to the guys yeah um the cons to it is the guy there's you know and props to the the, the insta insta famous guys i mean because you know what they've they haven't spent a lot of time on stage or accomplished very much on stage, but you know, our rock stars online monetizing yeah. and doing great things. Yeah. So uh, for guys like myself, like I like a little bit more, more credibility, you know, behind some things like, Hey, this guy, <laughs> this guy's, you know, proof from experience that, Hey, he's done something um, with what he's telling you versus yeah. like, Hey, do what I do to look like me. Well, like, I don't know. You know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, we, you know? Yeah. There's yeah, a lot you've, of you've got 3.5 million there, so. followers, right? And that, you know, that, that, that's <laughs> exactly. their, that, that, that that's doesn't their, make you credible. With that's their, their credit. No. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No. Like you, you've been very smart with social media and cool with making videos, but like, do you really know what you're doing? It, it's, yeah. you know, and most of those guys, they got great genetics. Um, you know, they, they do have some idea or had some kind of coach help them. And, and a lot of them, you know, take a, probably a, a decent amount of, of gear. And then yeah. they're telling people, hey, follow my eight-week program to look like me. Like, bro, yeah. you're, you're scamming people. Let's yeah. be honest. Like, I kind of got into this not too long ago online. I made a little live video. And I was just like, there's unrealistic expectations set by these guys for people, especially young guys that are a little naive. Yeah. Because, you know, they're, they're looking at these guys like, man, I want to look like that. But Hey, they say I could follow their program and do it naturally and this and that. And it's, it's just a lie. Like, yeah. so I, I caution a lot of young guys, be smart with who you listen to and, and vet the source and, you know, understand and educate yourself on all these things. It, it's, it's funny because, you know, back when I was growing up and I was getting into it and, you know, I, I read all the magazines and, and, you know, I was, I was a teenager or whatever, you know, we, we somehow knew though, that these guys were on gear Right, but nobody talked about it. We didn't care, and we were inspired by what they were doing. But now it's flipped, where people are thinking, "Okay, yeah, these influencers are not on anything, and you know, I can look like that type of thing." But back in the day, we knew, we didn't care, we didn't talk about it, and we were just inspired by that bloody physique physique that we saw in the magazine, and we wanted to try to be as big as we can be. Absolutely, and. And it was, it was more, yeah, that was, it was inspiring. It was motivating to see, you know, the guys in the magazine squatting five, six, 800 pounds, like Ronnie back in the day, yeah. watching those old school videos. Like, man, those were, those were incredibly motivating to, to watch. And I mean, back when the DVD players were still in, in existence, you know, we'd, you'd throw a DVD and before you go train of, you know, the old Cutler or the, the Olympia guy. <laughs> the the road Olympia. to the O. Battle for the Olympia. Battle for the Olympia on the road to the the black and white. You'd watch that and you're like, all right, man, I'm ready to do this. I don't care how shitty I feel. Like, I'm I'm (laughs) going to do what I have to do to get it done. So, yeah, now it's a very different different game. It's, you know, everybody wants the the quick answer, the, hey, if I do this stack, I'm going to look amazing. Like, 
it's it's a it's a long play. Bodybuilding's a long play. It's definitely more of a marathon than it is a sprint. Like it's not a hey, if you do this challenge or take all these this gear, you're gonna look you're gonna be Mr. Olympia. That's not the case, you know. Yep. So I, I think that's what people are are getting a little bit discouraged about, or they're just getting the wrong information from guys that are saying, I, I hate the guys that, that claim to be natural and you know, they're not yep. that. like. Hey, I, I always wonder really, about Michael Hearn. I don't, I don't know if you want to get into that one, but I just, uh, <laughs> you know, like as a person, I, I mean, what he's done with his physique. Yeah. He's been training his whole life. life. Yeah. I mean, Mike's 108 years old and yes. he still looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he's broke, he's broke the time. He's, he beat father time. Father but, time, um, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I know how, training for 20 years and when i was completely off trying to get my wife pregnant being i could certifiably 100 natural yeah like, man i felt like crap like yeah. i mean my everything hurt like it was it was brutal like you know yeah. there's stuff that i'm like why do my joints hurt i feel like recovery is terrible like yeah. i don't yeah. not as strong you know i still train hard but, but it's uh, sore you're sore stuff after. he's doing you know yeah. at, at his age you know repping 405 like it's nothing like you just kind of go like this, like, ah, I don't know, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just, just cut it. Like, I don't, people really wouldn't even care. Like, they wouldn't hey, care. I do this. No. Like, dude, you look incredible. But yeah. just yeah. I, 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 to, to me, maintain to, that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, like, at a, yes. the, the level conditioning. Conditioning. I mean, of course. Of course. The and, size. And, and it's kind of like, you know, the, the people in the, in the industry, they know. We know. He knows we know. But it's everybody outside of the industry right that yeah. are kind of believing of this you yeah. know and that's the unfortunate part of it, it. yeah I, it, it it doesn't sit well with me because it to me it's it's like you're you're lying to the people that that are that yeah. are fans of the whole of everybody yes. of, yep. of the yep. sport the industry and and it kind of it it kind of discredits us a little bit because you know, well i can do it without it but these guys need it so i'm better than right. like, there's a little yeah. bit right. of that in there too like so I, I I don't know like I, I'm not I don't I don't agree with that approach to things and each no. their own but um, yeah 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 no fair enough and, and and you know it kind of leads me into a little bit of of the next question here um, what advice would you give to someone looking to be uh, a professional bodybuilder like coming up this day and age I would say ed educate like I said educate yourself you know learn about you know, read, read, there's a lot of great information out there. And a lot of good guys have put information out there, like, um, especially credible sources, like there's hormone doctors, like, like if, anabolic doc, I'm a huge fan of, like, if you start, if you want me to start to understand hormones and how they work in your body, the pros and cons, follow somebody like that, who is putting out yeah. great information on a daily basis, you know, getting into the science of hormones and, and, and the side effects and then what each one will do, like, uh, he played a, he helped me quite a bit when it was coming time to, to get fertile again and different, different mm -hmm. things oh, I can nice. do with, with that I could take to help my body. Um, and, and there's a lot of good pros out there that share information that are very knowledgeable. Um, it would be get with a reputable coach, somebody that, that, uh, I mean, look at their track record all the way back. Like there's some guys that have hurt a lot of people that is kind yeah. of just brush under the rug and you're like, well, yep. you know, now they, they may have some really good results and, but to me, like how, why I picked my trainer, Gina, was I saw her take some very, you know, B, C level guys, average, you know, guys mm -hmm. that state level competitors and make them look really good. Actually took a few to turn pro. And I was like, that's impressive. Yep. You mm -hmm. know, with a lot of these coaches that are taking elite genetic guys and they're, you know, yeah, they're I mean, already... my mom could coach them yeah. into the right, right, right. probably yeah. win. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. That's right. Like, you know, like <laughs> Like Flex Lewis, great, great friend of mine. Yeah, right. You know, right. my mom could prep him into the, the Mr. Olympia. Yeah, the dude's a freak. So. It's kind of like Hani Romba <laughs> taking on Chris Bumstead, and he's already like multiple time Mr. Olympia. Like, are you really doing that much there? But yeah, right. I just want to point right. that so, out. So yeah. uh, you know, there's some very smart people out there. I think you know, look if I think there is some credibility to a trainer that has competed before that understands it a little bit too, like. Yep. Maybe not one show, but have done have done a few to understand it. Other than like, hey, I did one show and now I'm an expert. Like, I I think there's there's value into somebody that has competed before that understands it a little bit, you know. But also, yeah. you know, I'd like to know that they have some schooling behind it. Do it, they understand how the body works too? Like that's how I felt. Like you know, when I I had ten years as a firefighter paramedic, I spent a ton of time in different you know in schooling for that understanding the body. 
and then just my personal side of uh, you know, learning my body and how it works and hormones and, and all that kind of stuff. So those two played really well for me. And I was able to kind of, anytime a coach told me something to do, I could look at it and be like, ah, that's not right. Like, I know that's not going to work. Right. Yeah, or I'd right. be like, okay, that's, that's the right approach. I'm going to trust what you're saying. Yeah. But definitely, remember, you got to be patient with it. You know, too many people want to rush the process. Yeah. And be like, man, I want to turn pro in a year. And I got these big aspirations. I'm going to quit my job. And I'm going to, you know, yep. like full time bodybuilder. <laughs> like, no. There's there's a lot that goes. Bodybuilding is a very expensive sport. Yeah. I wish, it, I wish there was more money into the the sport and, and yes. for, for yes. athletes competing. But yeah, that's not the case. And um, yeah. <laughs> well, Speaking of pros and pro shows, um, big question. I think everybody watching yeah. wants to know, are you doing any shows this year or next year? Likely not this year because yeah. uh, babies do the beginning of November. Okay. So we're, that's the focus on, on that, you know, and like said, launching the new, the new uh, upgraded human yeah. coaching that I'm doing. And, and, and that's been so much time and, and effort put in that, but my wife asked me about a week or two ago, she said, what do you think about the 2024 Arnold? And I said, okay. mm -hmm. I said, are you saying I should do it? And she kind of, she <laughs> kind of gave me this look like she uh, obviously support me either way, but yeah. um, you know, I'm definitely getting toward uh, being, you know, I'll be 38 this year. So it's a little bit toward the end of, end of the stage time for me. I don't want to be 48 competing. Yeah. You know, some of these guys like Phil right, Kahar, right. Who, Crazy, guy yeah, is crazy. incredible, but I don't want to be yeah. <laughs> on stage. Yeah. Like, you know, I want to be able to run around with, with my child and not be like, oh god, my back's screwed yeah. up, yeah. And my knees. Yeah, and yeah, 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 so, yeah. Um, the Arnold twenty twenty four, it's on the radar. So I, I I'm, I'm not going to say one hundred percent, but I'm not going to say no. I'm done. So the Arnold well, twenty twenty four. I mean, I love exciting. the Arnold. I think it's it's one of the best shows. Great show, best run show. There's so yeah. much it gets publicized tremendously. There's a lot yeah. of energy and the fans love it. It kind of starts yeah. the year. So I'm like, yeah. man, I, that could be uh that could be a good one. That could be a good one. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That'd be great. There's breaking news here. You heard it could be the 2024. Yeah, for, yeah, the breaking Classic. news is it could. It's a, it's a high possibility. <laughs> yes. But, yeah. but, but Steve, we would love to see you do it, man. Yeah. That would be uh, fantastic. Yeah. 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 Uh, that kind of leads me into the next question. Um, yeah. What's your take on the current top five? Mr. Olympia competitors and what are maybe your, your prediction for this year's top five, Mr. O. Ooh, um, God, the, the O was a little bit all over the place. Yeah. You know? Like it, yep. it's a yep. mix match of and different types of physiques. See, yeah. It's a, it was a mix match. Yeah. And usually you'll see kind of a similar physique. Like when I play six, I was kind of the odd man out. Like I was a taller guy. Everybody yeah. else was like five, eight, yep, below. Yeah. Yep, and yep. then here I'm six foot plus yep. like, so it, you know, you had big Rami and then, and then you had, you know, hottie, who's not a very big guy, yep. you know, structurally he's huge, but um, I thought hottie as a Mr. Olympia, like physique was incredible. Hard as nails, you know, super round. Like he fit what a Mr. Olympia sh should look like. Um, so I wasn't mad at that. Derek is is a freak walking around. I mean, he looks like he's just like pumped with air. Yeah, yeah. so big and round. Um, so I'd have to say, like the the, the outlook of the top guys is, is very good. Like you yeah. know, th these are really good, clean physiques. They don't look like they're they're yeah. over drugged and 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 shot. And it just you know, yeah. um, so I I like that part of it. Um, I, I was I was surprised. You know, I saw Derek really moved up. Obviously, kind of running in yeah. the O, being the first one he's done at, at yeah. the, in the open. So I was like, man, that's that's great. I love seeing that. It wasn't like okay, he's got to start here and work his way up, and yeah. you know, kind of. Um, so it was good to see some fresh blood in there, and it wasn't like somebody was just you know, okay, well, Rami was the previous Mister O, we're just going to give it to him again. So yeah. I like you know mixing things up. I like keeping fans guessing that it's not you know. It, to me, anytime I saw. A, an Olympia poster, I see a show poster and it's only got two guys on it. And I'm like, well, is there 20 guys in the show or yeah. two? Yeah. Like, let's give everybody, to me, everybody should deserve a fair chance to get up there, be judged. And if they bring the, their best package or they're better than a guy that maybe is normally third, then give them third. Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so to me, I, I think this year it, it's, 
I mean, Samson threw, you know, threw the curveball on there at the Arnold, winning the Arnold. So yeah. I mean, if, if he's got an incredible physique, he a big guy. Like there's a lot of big bodies right now in the in the open division. Yeah. I mean, Nick Walker's huge, Samson's yeah. huge. You have some of these guys that are just, you know, 270 plus pound yeah. guys. So as a larger frame guy myself, I like seeing that because it's yeah. a little bit, it's a little bit more of the freak factor in it. Yeah. Not just like these pretty physiques, not yeah. knocking like the Dexter and, and <laughs> the, the bone act yeah. who's got their beautiful physiques, but I like the bigger guys, yeah. the freak show. So yeah. it's going to okay. be, I hope they, I hope that they don't go too much on size either. Um, like yeah. That's the thing, you know, because they start, there gets to a point like, and I hope uh, Derek doesn't do this. I hope Lunsford doesn't, overly play the size game and then it distorts his physique and then yeah. you know, he starts his stomach starts having issues and then yeah. it's not it's not this real streamlined clean physique um you know nick walker is able to take maybe not structurally a, an ideal physique but the way he presents it on stage yeah. he does a phenomenal job yeah. and and that's what bodybuilding is about it, it's hiding flaws and, yeah. and and showcasing your strengths and he's one of the guys that does it really well yeah. If you could pick one guy to win this year, who would your pick first place be? I just because my, you know, the red, white, and blue runs deep in me. If if, <laughs> if Derek could come out and, and awesome. take yeah. first yeah. place, yeah. you yeah. know, um, I, I'd like to see Derek do it. I think he's got a physique that could, you know, really represent what Mr. Olympia looks like. He's a he's an intelligent guy. He speaks well. Like to me, yep. the sport there's there's two it's two parts to what a Mr. Olympia should be. It should be an insane physique that somebody looks at and like, man, I either want to look like that or that's something that that looks like should be a statue. Yep. And number two, it should be somebody that can get in front of a camera. It should be able to get on a on a on a mainstream TV show yep. and be like, man, that's what bodybuilding's about. This guy's intelligent. He could speak yep. well. He could yes. represent the sport. Maybe get it a little bit more mainstream. That would be ideal to me. What a Mr. Olympia should yep. be. And Derek would be perfect for that, man. They could yeah. be incredible. So, yeah, no, uh, good uh, feedback there. Uh, so he's calling Derek Lunsford the next Mr. Olympia. <laughs> I mean, right I'm here. not doing it this year. <laughs> you so know, with, Derek. Yeah, yeah. That, that's you know, right. That's right. It, in light of Steve like, well, not doing it, yes, you know, in light of Steve Derek will be Derek will be the the yeah. the, the fallback guy. All right. All right. Exactly. All right. So next question here, wrapping things up. Um, what's your like? Talk to us a little about the upgraded human and like, what's your five-year plan moving forward? You know, I, the, I, I do have, like I said, I start thinking a little bit more legacy and long-term in the yep. recent, but I, you know, I think things could change so much when you start thinking five years. So the way I typically like to think is like making three month or, or 90 day kind of goals yep. and, and, and just, you know, I know where I'd like to be, but I'm like, okay, instead of just saying, I want to, we need to lay that map out. How do I do it? So to me, I like to do it every three months and really lay a good plan. Of, okay. I want to get to here. I get there. I want to get to the next area. But for me, um, it's building, building this up and it's exciting because I feel like if I could take all this knowledge, everything I've learned and, and relationships I developed and, and really, I've really spent a lot of time investing into myself um, in, in many different areas. And I think, I'm, a, I'm part of a huge men's group at church that we got 400 guys to get together every Saturday morning. And I see this community and I see there's a thirst and a hunger for, for guys and people in general that want to really upgrade areas. So many areas of their life, like, you know, in, in fitness, which is a huge component to what um, success is for somebody. And, and there's been a big emphasis on, on fitness and wellness in, in the business world, because people understand man, if I get my fitness right, if I'm in better shape, I'm going to have more energy. I'm going to be able to perform better in the, in the business world. And then also relationships are better. There's, there's like this overflow from getting your fitness right. So obviously understanding that component of this is huge, but I, I ultimately teach and coach on like faith, family, fitness, and finance. It's just the four, yep. the core four of it. So yep. the faith component is huge. Having a, having a relationship with God, getting your mindset right. That's all in that faith component. And then there's the family, which is the relationship component. Uh, you know, how do you develop relationships and alignments in your life that are going to benefit you and, and, and be a better person ultimately? And how do you do that? Uh, the fitness component to that, I think I got down pretty well. Yeah. And then the finance, the entrepreneurial side, how to make money, how to keep money, how to invest money, how to build your business, how to, you know, do things like that. So 
I think a lot of people say understand maybe the fitness or they understand the finance, but you know, relationships are suffering or they, or, you know, guys are doing great in business, but, but their health is suffering. So yep. my thing is like, how do you upgrade level up these areas of your life um, and really help people become the best version of themselves. And, and that's, yep. that was, that was my vision with this. Um, so I, I've developed an app, the upgraded human app that, that yep. is it's I'm, I have different, <clears throat> there's community there. We do, I do live calls. I bring in experts in different areas. To, to, I do weekly calls myself, and then every so often I'll bring in a finance expert, or I'll bring in you know somebody that's yeah. a, a, an expert, say in, in hormone health or something, just to speak from authority. And I, I believe that if I don't like to teach, and a lot of people teach and talk about things from a theory or what they've read, but I believe mm. teaching from experience and things I've learned and, and things that other people have learned. There's a lot of value in that over just saying, yeah, I read this book and these are four steps that you should do. And it's like, okay, that's great. But do you do them? Have you done them? Are you, you know, yep. so yep. I love to, uh, and I'm a relationship guy. I love alignment. I love connecting people and I love helping people, you know, grow their business, grow their self. And, and that's kind of what it's about. Awesome. And we'll definitely put a link in the description to upgrade human for you, man. It sounds awesome. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it makes sense. And I love the name. It just, it's like upgrading yourself, upgrading your life, man, like yeah. take advantage of it. Yeah. So I think we all need yeah. it. I, I think when you really start understanding the value of changing the way you think or elevating the way you think, upgrading the way you think, it'll upgrade your life. Yeah. And, and we have, there's really two ways to think about when you think we're, 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 you could either think by default and that's usually the way that our parents thought or the way we we're, you know, we we're brought up or our circumstances, or you could think by design. And that's, that's a mm. different way of thinking. It's a, yeah. it's a way that's intentional about the way you think. And, and, and I talk a lot about intentionality, like being more intentional with your time, being more intentional with your relationships, being more intentional with your health, not just going through the motions, you know, so many things, there's so many distractions, you know, that we have our phones and, and yeah. all the distractions of this world. But they're they're really just taking away from our time and it, their distractions. Um, they're not bringing a lot of value when when we need to bring value. And like my thing is, I want to be the person that walks into a room and that you know elevates the temperature in that room. It, you yeah. know, I want to walk in and somebody be like, "There's this energy about that person," and I want to know what who they are, what they yeah, are, what yeah. they're doing. So, yeah. um, my thing is helping people be able to take you know risks on themselves, bet on themselves, and get more confidence in themselves to do the things they want to do. Life's too short, man. You know, and I think if we just, we all need to work on each other. And, and, and when you bring community together, there's just something that happens that it's hard to explain when you bring people together in one room or in a community, in a group, like there's just yeah. people start feeding off each other and good things start happening. Yeah, man. I feel like I just went to a master class. Like I, 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 know, I know, right. We're, we're, we're all energized now. That, yes. You know, that, now, now we gotta, we gotta shut it down and go do something. <laughs> Let's go. Let's, awesome. go. Let's, let's do it. This is great. No, I mean, uh, you and do you do speaking engagements? Do you go out and go to schools or anything yeah, like that? Yeah. So th this year was, I've done, I've done quite, you know, quite a few, and I started doing more of that. And then I've been very involved in the, in the mastermind arena, and being in, in several and speaking at a lot of them. Yeah. And then um, I had this vision toward the end of last year, going into this year about wanting to host my own mastermind, uh, my own live event. And that was kind of why I launched the upgraded human app. Yeah. So I did the upgraded human mastermind live event in May, the day before I did the Kuklo classic, which is my bodybuilding show that I host every year. Yeah. So yeah. I brought in eight amazing speakers, including myself and my wife. And, and it was a day just packed full of amazing awesome. Uh, I had, you know, Tommy Vex out there, Sean Whalen, uh, Jesse Lee, Steve Weatherford, some dear friends of mine. These are people I have relationships with that I, I can call on the phone. And and they all, you know, supported my vision on this and were able to show up and pour into these people. And and it's just like people, when for somebody like myself, if I didn't know anything about masterminds or events that you see, like these personal development things, you know, you kind of look at it, you're like, ah, oh, these people are just wanting to take your money. But I tell you what, like if you are willing to just invest in yourself, and I tell this, the best investment you can make is in yourself. Yep. And when you're, you know, if you pay the money to be in that room, you know, whether it's three or five hundred dollars or whatever, whatever the cost is, I tell you, you will get more out of that one day than spending four years in a classroom trying to learn something that you may not even be able to apply in the real world. Yep. But those, those, I've made more advances in my life with, with in relationship and in business, in, in personal development side of things. 
in in one day spending you know five hundred dollars to be in a room with with these people than than you know three years of school or three years in business. And I'm like, man, if I went if I went to that, I would have not had to do all deal with all those headaches in business if I invested yeah. in going to one of these masterminds. So I'm, they're getting a lot more popular. There's a lot of them out there, but you know, look at, again, just like with everything, like you have to look at the fruits of the people and, and, you know, what are their intentions in it and what are they teaching ultimately? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, Matt, uh, that's wrapped up for me. Uh, do you have any last no, questions? No, there? I, no I, good. I think I'm okay. wrapped up too. So All right. let's get to the fast five. <laughs> so we'll go to the fast five. Yeah. Right? yeah. So like it's it. just uh, one word that I say, and then you have a one word response, best response to it. Or try to have a one word response. Yeah. Try to, but you could elaborate if you want. Um, <laughs> Uh, Texas. Hot. Okay. <laughs> there you uh, go. There good you go. One. Yeah. Branch Warren. Uh, monster. Monster. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, the Arnold Classic. Legendary. Okay. Uh, Michelle, your wife. Uh, my angel. Yeah. That's two words, but yeah. Angel. No, no, but super, <laughs> super we'll be happy for that one. Yes. Super appropriate, and we'll yeah. let that one slide because yeah. that, 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 that's a good one. That's a good answer. All right. And lastly, uh, upgraded human. One word for that descriptor. I Must would have, have to say, um, valuable. Great. That's what, awesome. That's, Perfect. To Perfect. me, like, you Perfect. know what? There's a, a ton of value in there. And I believe in value. Um, yeah. You know, everything I want to do, I want to bring value to what I do. And and um, that, to me, Upgraded Human, it brings a ton of value. Awesome. Well, that's amazing. You brought a lot of value to this wow. podcast and this Great. blog for us, Steve. So that, that's a perfect one to end off on. Hey, Great. thank you, guys. All right. We'll wrap it up here, guys. Uh, Steve, again, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. We appreciate it, sir. All right, well, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this episode, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and click the bell notification so you get notified every time we release a new episode. We appreciate you watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.